everybody. In this video, I'm going to be showing you about how you can create a stopwatch style app inside of code.org app lab. So let's get started. First, I'll share, I mean, show my screen right here. The first step will be to actually open up code.org and create a new project, which will be an app lab project. So let's go over to code.org. And then let's create, and then we're going to select App Lab because this is going to be an App Lab project. Now we will go ahead and first rename our project to be Stopwatch um, Demo or something. And then we're going to hit Save. And now the first step for us will be to design our app. So I'm going to do exactly that. So first I'm going to start by dragging in a button right there and also one more. Um, we'll have two buttons. For the first button, the text will be B, um, sorry, the ID will be btn underscore start, and even the text will be start. And that can all remain the same. Maybe we want, we want to bump up the font size a little bit, let's say 17, like so. And the background color, we can make it green. Uh, a little bit here. Um, okay, that looks good. And now for the second button, what we want to do is call this btn underscore stop. And it'll be the stop button. And I'm going to set the text to be stop. And I'm going to make it a red color. Okay. Now, um, the font family, okay. The font size, again, let's bump that up to 17. Now what we will do is we'll drag in a label. And here for the label, we'll give an ID of LBL time. And then here we'll just say time colon zero. Now, what we will simply do is just increase the font size to be a much higher value, like 30, like so. And then I'm going to center that right there. Now we will begin by actually typing our code or actually we need to make this label bigger because if our um, number it is a high number or you know it has many digits then the label will actually not be able to fit all of that in it. So that's why we're making it bigger before that happens itself. So the um, time and the text alignment we're going to align it centrally so that snaps to the center now the first thing that we are going to start by is declaring a variable called start time and then also declaring another variable called timer running timer running and by default is going to be set to false because by default the timer won't be running when we play or run our application now we will create an event of when our um, start button is clicked and then according to that we will actually start our um, timer so we will do on events of the button start click we will um, put in the call back which is going to be a function in this case now inside of this function the first thing that we basically want to do is check if timer running is equal to false okay and basically there's a shorter and a much more efficient way of doing this which is just to do not um, exclamation point timer running that just checks if it's false and here what we want to do is just basically set the timer running to be true because when we click the button if it's false then it'll be set to true to true now we will set our start time to be get time. That's whatever the time is. And now we will create a time loop. And basically a time loop is of course a loop which will run um, on based off on the given millisecond. So it's going to run each how many ever millisecond you've provided. So I'm gonna set that to a thousand means one second and that's milliseconds, not seconds. So this time loop is going to run each um, thousand milliseconds, which is a second, one second. Now we will create a variable um, var and this is going to be actually called current time which of course the current time and even this is going to be set to get time 
like so. And another variable called time elapsed. And we will set that to actually be current time, current time minus start time. And right now, this is in milliseconds, but we want to convert that to be in seconds. So for that, we will um, not declare variables. Set time elapsed, time elapsed to be math dot round. That'll just round it off. And here we will say timed. I mean, not timed loop. Time elapsed. Elapsed divided by 1000. So here we're just converting to seconds. Converting to seconds. Like so. Now the next thing that we want to basically do is actually update this label. So basically right now we have the time and all of that stuff, but now we hit run nothing happens that means that that is basically because we're not actually updating this label so for updating the label we'll just use set text which will of course set the text and we will do label time and then the text is going to be time colon and then whatever the time elapsed is so essentially the elapsed time um did i spell that wrong elapsed like so. Okay, now if I hit run and if I hit start, then boom, it starts counting, right? But if I hit stop, it doesn't really work. So basically, we want to create an event for when we actually click on the stop button. So we will do stop, click, and then the callback is going to be a function. And here, what we will do inside of this function is going to be just to stop timed loop, which will essentially stop this timed loop. Um, oops, this timed loop, sorry. And now if I hit run, and let this count up, let's say two, and then we want to stop it, boom, that works. And then we can restart again, of course. Um, oh, actually we can't because we have um, actually not set the timer running to be false, okay? So all of this code is not gonna run if the timer running is still true. So for that, we need to actually set the timer running. When we um, stop it, it'll be set to false. So the timer is not running anymore. Now, if I hit start, and then I stop, and then I start again, it should be working. Boom, it does. Now I'm just gonna explain the code one more time. So the first thing that we of course do is we get the start time and then we also store if the timer is currently running. And then we get, um, when we actually click on this button, we actually get that inside um, of this event on event. And then we basically check if um, the timer is not running. And if it is not running, we will make it run. So we will essentially set it to be true. And then we will set the start time to be whatever the current time is. So we'll get the time. And then we create a time loop, which will run each second, right? So thousand, you can play around with this value and go with whatever you like. Then inside of here, we're declaring a local variable called current time, and then we're setting that to get time. That means the current time, of course. And then we're creating a variable called time elapsed, which is essentially storing how much ever time has been elapsed. And we set that to be current time minus store time, which will give you the elapsed time. Now, at this point, it's actually in the form of um, milliseconds but we want it inside of seconds so basically that's why we said the time elapsed to be math that round means a little round off and then time elapsed divided by thousand which will give it in seconds okay and then we actually need to update this label so that's why we are using set text and setting it to whatever the elapsed time is okay and now we also want the stop button to function, so that's why we have this other on event, which um, actually senses when you click on the stop button instead of the start button, 
and it has this little callback which basically says the timer running to be false that means the timer is no more running right so if i hit stop boom it's no more running and it actually stops this timed loop which is running right over here so it's not gonna run anymore so that's essentially the explanation of the code and with that being said we have actually created a stopwatch app in a very simple manner inside of code.org app lab and if you want you can also attach this app to any other project or game or whatever you're creating so with that being said again we have completed our timer app so yeah thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next time goodbye